Toronto sales up 18.9 percent. May 2019, Toronto home sales are up 18.9 percent. What the hell is going on? The market's up, the market's down. I made a video um, a week ago, two weeks ago. Is the market up or down? Uh, the swings, the pendulum swings, still continuing. And for this month, uh, reported that May 2019 uh, generated just under 10,000 sales on the MLS system, like 10 or 11 sales below, so 9,900 and something, okay? What's going on? Why uh, are sales up 18.9%, 19%? It's basically a fifth more than they were this time last year. Okay, so let's dive in. This is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Realtor, condo expert. That's what I like to think. And I'm gonna give you some stats. And at the end of this video, there's a surprise. I'm gonna show you a crazy fixer upper. It's kind of a rooming house with an amazing location that I think could be a phenomenal investment, okay? But that's the very end. So we're gonna run through this. And then I'm gonna show you that um, listing which is on the market right now. It's really cool. All right, so numbers first, <laughs> school first. Then we go for the fun stuff. So. Um, I just posted this morning, I sent it to all my mailing lists, and uh, anyone that uh, needs the information uh, gets it first, and it's uh, on Twitter, it, I, po I post it on Twitter with the link to the mailing list archive, so if you want, you can click here, and it'll open, and then click this link, and it's going to open the MailChimp link, so if you register on MailChimp or whatever list I use, you would have received this email, okay, and you'll be the first to know about it. And it does work. The open rates are crazy. Uh, so what's happening is that right now, I'm going to go back here. Right now, we got MarketWatch release from Treb saying that the, in May 2019, the number of sales, the number of sales, not the price, the number of sales, how many condos sold, up by 18.9%, reaching the 10,000 mark, which is more or less our average. So we had a big slump. We we drop about we drop to about eight thousand sales a month, and now we back up to ten thousand. Now think about it: ten thousand sales a month times twelve. That's one hundred twenty thousand sales in the GTA. They're just a Toronto real estate uh, system, okay? And that's resale. Does not include the new construction, and does not include the assignments, and does not include the private deals, and does not include anything that is not reported on the system. So, how many more? I guess about 30,000 more sales happening. So really you're looking at about 150,000 sales in the GTA. Okay, every every year, give or take. So 400 sales a day or so. Uh, Yossi Kaplan, youtube.com slash Yossi Kaplan, my channel where you'll find all the great stuff. Thank you very much for subscribing, liking, not liking, putting comments. It helps very, very much because when you make an action on a video, YouTube will show it to more people. So thank you for this. If you're angry, put it in there. It also helps me a lot. Um, UrbanRealtyToronto.com. This is my main site for many, many years. It changes what it looks like. Uh, but you can come here. There's a lot of great information. Uh, whether it's I like, compare condos. I show you crazy unique sales. Townhouses, which is the hottest commodity right now. Uh, current listing and so on and so forth. YorkVilleLuxuryRealEstate.com. Million plus. 488 University Avenue. I have a couple of uh, investments there starting at 649.9 for the one bedroom up to about 1.3 million for a corner unit uh, around the 40th floor and what i've done here is i put this article uh, yesterday or the day before i believe and you'll find all the beautiful pictures and a lot a lot of floor plans as many as i can find i cut and paste them here and i made a gallery of all these floor plans and you can see below the file name so it'll give you an idea of what it is okay um, so that's 48, 488 University. Um, here, you can also click on this map. It will take you directly to what's for sale. And below, there's four other links. Financial District for Sale, Entertainment, Bay, Bloor, Young. And there's more and more and more. There's live maps here. This thing is actually alive. It's moving. It's all good. All right. Uh, UFCKaplan.com. That's another site. So I'm running a lot of sites here. Each site has slightly different information on it okay so i like to kind of put it out and not just amass everything in one long list it is what it is okay so i'm going to go into the report so on uh, bloomberg bnm bloomberg.ca toronto home sales uh, uh, jump 18.9 percent and spring selling season heats up uh, you can watch the video but they basically just quote the article and everything you see on the media um, is just quoting the information 
So they take they go to this page here, they go to Toronto Real Estate Board, then they go to Market Watch, okay, which is here. You go here to the housing charts, then you take it to the Market Watch, then you're gonna open a PDF, and that's what you're gonna see. Uh, so and I'll, I'll leave I'll leave uh, the link below so you can find all these links. I'm just gonna cut and paste them in the comments. So just go look there, okay? So if you look here. Uh, and these guys are reverse right for left, uh, 9989, so 11 sales below 10,000. We'll call it 10,000 sales for May 2019 and 8,400 sales, so 1,600 less for this period, this month, last year. And I calculated it's something like 330-something uh, sales uh, now, and it was 200-something, about 52 sales less um, per day each day, okay? So 52 times 31, about 1,600. That's how I did it. Uh, the average price is slightly up from 809 or 810 to say 840, so about by 30,000, about 3%. Okay, so that's not bad. You want the real estate market to be up just over inflation. That's kind of what's called a healthy, yeah, a healthy, a healthy dose. And the reason is because we want to beat inflation with whatever investment we do. The reason we're investing is because our money gets eroded. The economy is fake. I've been telling you that the whole time. They're probably going to remove me off Facebook, but that's what it is. Um, everything is massively centrally controlled by central banks, which we, the people, or our governments don't actually have access to them, if you know that. Uh, they can increase the interest rate. They can lower it. They can print more money. They can do whatever they want. There's nothing much we can say about it. Um, but we do have control over other things we do, like where we buy, where we sell, what kind of decisions we make. So within that equilibrium, within, within this universe, within this financial system, we need to find our way, our game to play the system. And that's what I'm doing and that's what I'm teaching you how to do. And I'm sharing the information and the knowledge I've been uh, uh, getting all these years with you. That's really the way to do it. So if you look at Market Watch, let me see if I can uh, zoom in here. Uh, Apple Plus or Control Plus on PC. Okay, and you'll zoom in. I'm going to check here that it's still, yeah, well, that's pretty good. Move it to the right a bit. Move. Okay. Okay, good. So you can see 9989 versus 8402, May 2019 versus May 2018. It's just coming over my head there. Uh, and the average price is right here. So 809 or 810 versus 838, 840. And you know, I love that little uh, the little thing in the middle there. And I, I always talk about it because I think that's where all the juice is. So let me zoom in for you right here. Forgot this mouse is reverse. It's the Apple way. Uh, so this is really important. So look at the sales, 416, 905 in total. Okay, so you got detached. These are the, the criteria. Detached, semi-detached, townhome, and couldn't apartment. And then below, it's going to show you the same criteria, but with the changes. So first the numbers, then percentages. Okay, so in the 416, uh, obviously the condo is always the largest uh, sector because it's the cheapest. Easy, easy, e uh, easier barrier to get in. Townhouses always do well. I've been talking about townhouses a lot. That BNN Bloomberg video, they also mentioned the townhouses. They're about six months out behind me. But hey, it's Bloomberg. 16.6% uh, .6 uh, in the sales. Semis are doing great, and so do homes. So it's about a third for the detached, a third for the semis, and a third uh, at the rest. In terms of the percentages, if, 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 I, if I put them together, uh, and if I look at the number of sales, 11A, so 1,200 homes were sold, so it's about 40, 30, 40 homes a day, every day, seven days a week. Semi-detached 400 divided by 30, 12, 13. Uh, townhouses, 366, so divide by 30, and 17, and almost 1,800 condos sold in the 416. Uh, and the 416 is between, it's the old Toronto basically, so it's east of, uh, east of Don, west of uh, Humber, up to 401, maybe north of there, and to the water, okay? Uh, in, the, in the 905, there are more sales, it's a larger area, it's a larger area, so it, it did more sales here. Uh, and you look at the average prices, condos are still the cheapest, this is average 416 at 642, 905 is cheaper. Townhouse is at uh, 800,000 for your average townhouse, but most in the downtown here, a million or more now. Semis at a million, that's average 416. Again, you know, the closer you get to the core, the higher the price. And the deta detached, just 1.4. Okay, that's fine. 
And what's important here to see is that um, the market is moving good. So we had a bit of a slump. You know, the previous Ontario government introduces all these measures to kind of calm the market down, and it, it did calm the market down. Uh, in BC, we see, and this, these are very, very important things because in BC, we get a lot of fake money. I don't know what you call this, this kind of money, but billions of dollars of cash buying homes, buying whatever he can find because he wants to launder the money, he wants to take the cash, bags of cash. And one of the articles I read this morning said now a lot of the Asian investors move into Toronto. So will the Ontario government crack down on this uh, illegal money is really causing prices in a way it's artificial to come up? I don't know, but you gotta be, you got to watch out for them. Uh, you got to watch out for these. It's usually in the high end, but it's going to start trickling down to, you know, a million dollar properties and then maybe even $600,000 property, you know, because if you have a uh, million dollar in cash, maybe you'll try to buy two instead of one, kind of reduce your risks. That's where it's at, okay? So that is the report. I'm going to zoom back out to normal. And then, of course, as usual, they got all these numbers. I don't even bother with these. I, I, I did, you know, it just, life's too short. But the most important thing here that I want to tell you is that the reason why 18.9% um, jump, which is kind of out of nowhere, no, it's not. And I, I wrote it right in the newsletter. If you're not signed to the newsletter, go to Urban Realty Toronto, go to Investor Newsletter, and just sign up. And there's a link here, too, on um, Yorkville. And I want to dive into, into, there's the newsletter here, okay? So there's eight reasons. So we, you know, right now, 323 sales a day, a year ago, 271, 52 more. So what just happened? I'm going to go through these eight reasons and, and talk about them a little bit. And then I got this crazy house to show you, okay, which is a crazy fixer-upper. Okay, so number one is demand for units is high. The demand is high, and the reason it's high is because everyone's moving to Toronto, whether it's by way of immigration from another country like myself, or moving from the peripheries, the suburbs, the, you know, the whatever, uh, 519 area code, 705, 613, all these area codes coming in, or maybe even from other provinces, you know. Um, so that's demand is high. And there's, there's, there's a bit of natural births, not so much because we're in a rich Western country, so not a lot of births, more of by way of immigration we grow in the population, and that's what we get. Um, also, the Canadian dollar is very, very low. I should have mentioned it, but it's not, but it's so low, it's on sale. If you have a cousin in Canada and you do not live in Canada, you better send them the money. There was a story like that in Vancouver. Uh, I got the money from my husband. He's not my husband. I, you know, I came up with a $500,000 deposit I didn't have. He gave me the money, but it's really my money. It's like it's a crazy story. Um, but that's what it is. It's like people from, you know, if you have a relative in Canada, you're going to send them the money. They're going to invest in Canada and they're going to write it under their name. And then it's not a foreign investment and you save yourself the 15%. I think, I think that's a trick that is probably exploited. I, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a government person. But need to be checked because those things cost us Ontarians more. Okay? I want the price to go down. Not up, down. Or, you know, nice, slow, and steady rise. 2, 3, 4, 5% of inflation. No more. That's the best for me. As someone who lives there, it's best for me. For someone who works there, it's best for me. Someone who sells real estate, it's best for everyone. Okay, um, but you know, it's going to be more, it's going to be more. We will see 10 and 15 and 20 percent uh, for many years to come, I believe, because everybody wants to come here because it's cheap. Okay, all these interest rates are low, and basically, you can just funnel money to Canada, buy a bunch of homes, and you're good. Okay, so number two is fears of market manipulation have subsided. What I mean by that is the clamping down on the fake money. Um, Right, um, um, not letting you get a mortgage unless you can really qualify for much worse, higher percentage mortgage. So the government is taking steps. The banks, the government is the same thing. Uh, they are taking steps to make sure that you can afford it by way of paying off for cash or maybe paying half cash and half mortgage or testing you. You know, that's the test to see what would happen. Can you still pay for it if mortgage rates are are up, have risen. So fears of market manipulation have subsided, you know, we can't get prime uh, um, subprime rates here, like it's got to be real. So if it's real, 
the market looks stable to me, I'm more positive about buying. I'm speaking from the investor perspective. You know, I, I'd like to buy. And, and we see this in the market. Um, you know, I work mostly with sellers, but also with buyers. Uh, and I see that when we come to sell, there's very few listings. And usually, especially if in the $600,000 range, those things are going off the market in days. Very, very easy because there's nothing else, especially downtown. So people are buying. And whoever is selling, you know, it's still a seller's market. And some of these comments uh, shows you it's a seller's market. Uh, Non-stop immigration to the GT. I, I, I just spoke about this. So people are coming here to school, for work, to try their luck, you know, do whatever. Number four is really interesting. Mom and pop waking up to invest. So a lot of my clients are people that are realizing they are investing for their kids. They invest for the future. They already have the house. You know, the kids are usually teenagers. And now they're like, they're probably in their 50s, these people. And they're like, okay, I got some money. I got 100000 available, 200000 available. We're in good health. We're in good spirits. We're both working. We're making good money. We're making maybe 100 or two or three or half a million a year. Let's invest in something. And that's what people are doing, and it's working very well for them. I pro you know, there's a large amount of my clients, buyers, that are buying mom and pop, small families, just buying. And it's like, we're just going to keep it. Maybe we'll flip it in a few years, but, you know, we're just going to start a real estate portfolio, and that's what they're doing. This computer is falling apart. <laughs> Still works. Young professionals are buying in droves. So, um, if you're now, if you're like in your, you know, mid to late twenties or mid to late thirties, and you amass some deposit, or maybe uh, your family gave you the deposit, that's common, especially in the east where I come from. You know, if if you get married, the two families will come together and and. Try to make sure that you can buy a place and you can have your family and the family is happy. You can buy your family and then your family is happy. Okay, but that's very common where I come from. I come from the East. So everyone's pushing their kids, you know, get out of the house, uh, get a good job, get married, here's some money, go buy a place, have some kids. So that is happening. Okay, and the young professionals are coming either because of the families are sending them, which is mom and pop, or because they come to town and they don't want to rent. They want to buy because in Canada, we like to buy. We don't like to rent. You know, we have one of the highest ratios of buyer to renters in the country. Not, uh, and, but I'll get to that in a minute because there's, there's a twist on the story here. Uh, New Ontario government considered business friendly. So, you know, it seemed that the current government is trying to do things that are good for business. Obviously, it's doing some things that are pissing a lot of people off. I'm not going to get into I'm a real estate guy. You know, I have no comments about this. But... In terms of real estate investing, um, it's it's becoming friendly. Where's that BNN? Where, where did it go? I don't know. But uh, if you, if you read the BNN, okay, it'll give you an idea of any of these news outlets, um, which are really the horn uh, for governments and banks. They kind of okay, everyone. Now we're doing this. Now it's safe to buy. So now we can go back to buying. So everyone's buying. And obviously, by the time the News media reports it. Myself and my investors already took advantage of this. Then we move to the next deal. We, we try to find the next niche. So we always look for a place in the market where there's a bit of a slump or maybe it hasn't caught up yet or there's some kind of a deal happening. It could be on one unit, could be in an area, could be in a building, but that's all I do. And people call me. I just had a call now. A uh, buddy has a bunch of investments along Young Street says he's a, he, these are my prices it's a thousand bucket foot for this unit and it's 1350 foot, foot foot for this unit and it's 14 for this unit and uh, Yorkville I got something at 1900 a foot so you know us people who are active we know we know who's got what and I I say okay and I you know I have this and I have that and I basically spend my mornings talking to my colleagues saying what do you got what's going on um, how can we help each other how can we make this better and the result is here the results are here okay so that's what we do. I'm going to go back to my list. Okay. So business friendly. We are business friendly, okay? Ontario is good. In the long run, you know, don't look at day to day. Look at a week or month or even a year. Look at 5, 10, 20, 30, 50 years. This is great. I mean, who wouldn't like to be living in Canada right now? And it's even sunny today, finally. Okay, the stock market is way too risky. PE ratios are nuts. So what's happening with the stock market is those companies that lose money like crazy, they just keep losing money and the stock keep coming up. You know, Uber is losing money. Uh, Tesla, I'm sure, is losing money. 
all these giant companies and maybe even Facebook is losing money and we just don't know it. I don't know. We don't have access to these things. If you ever read Markiel Burton's uh, Easy Walk Down Wall Street, it's an amazing book. It basically tells you like the nightmare level that each investor has. It's pretty funny, but he says, you know, don't invest in stocks unless you have inside information because you don't know what they're doing. So that's why I like real estate because it's one stock, it's worth $600,000 and there's only one of it and that's it. And that's how I look at it. And the PE ratio uh, in case of real estate is really your ROI, which is your uh, rent divided by your investment. That's how I look at it. Or your profit divided by your investment, cash on cash. Cash, cash on cash. Okay? If you want more information about this, just um, put a comment or shoot me uh, an email. I'll help you. Call, whatever. Millennials spend huge on rent and frappuccinos. Okay, so this is really important, but it's true. Millennial, millennials spend a lot. So a millennial, let's take this unit here, for example, at 501 Adelaide. So that's the Kingly. Just pulled it up. It doesn't matter which one, really. Uh, it's a uh, million dollars, two bed, two bath. It's going to be a bit of a smaller unit, uh, and maybe some of them rent it. So you know the rent for this unit will have to be about four bucks a foot. So you're looking at about four thousand dollars a month. And there's a young generation of people that are not going to save and you know walk another half a block to save fifty cents on the avocado. They're actually going to go and order the avocado toast for fifteen dollars uh, a pop, and they don't care. And they want to live in this place and they just spend money. They basically just live paycheck to paycheck. Maybe their parents pay for them. Maybe they have a rich uh, girlfriend, a boyfriend. I don't know, like somebody else. But nonetheless, millennials seem to be spending a lot more than previous generations. It's, it's, it's a whole other ecosystem. It's a whole other society. It's a whole other culture. So they're not like keeping their cards close and trying to save every cent they have. They just, they just go for it. So that means that it's allowing for rent to go higher, which supports higher prices. Because at some point, investors will say, well, you know, I don't mind spending another $100, $200, $300 a month if I have this beautiful, amazing million-dollar condo and somebody's going to pay me $4,000 I need another $200 a month. Who cares? It doesn't really matter. You already spend a million dollars. Um, but if the gap is too much, say $1,000, the investor will say, well, Will I make this on appreciation? Does this unit need to appreciate at least a thousand a month for you to? That's really what you're doing. You 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 you're really paying through the appreciation if if you want to look at it this way. Okay, so at some point the investor will say, well, I want to find something cheaper, a lower PE ratio, a lower dollar per foot. Okay, but you can come. This is the assignment search, by the way. You can come and see all the assignments we got here on the system, and there's more that are not listed. So that's what I meant when I said uh, millennials spend huge on rent and frappuccinos and avocado toast. So, you know, I'm going to have a, a, a small one-bedroom at Fashion House for rent at, uh, after Labor Day, September 1st, uh, 3rd, whatever it is, uh, or October 1st. And I'm going to ask for probably four bucks a foot, maybe even more. Who knows? Maybe I'll get it. Maybe there'll be a millennial that said, that's where I want to live. You know, they make $100,000 a year or they have the money and that's what they're going to do. Okay, so that is what's happening. Um, I want to show you a couple of really nice searches now. Um, and I, I will talk a little bit more about uh, the prices. Now, the other thing um, for the 18.9, a lot of sellers are realizing that it's okay to sell now. The market's really tight. And we've seen, you know, I, I work mostly with sellers. And we've seen sellers go, you know, it's, it's, it's okay to sell. It's okay to sell now because I got I, I got I got stuff to sell and I'm I'm making uh, good money, you know King West eight hundred thousand for eleven hundred square feet that's a really good price. It's a bit of an older building but it represents and it's fully renovated and it represents a discount of twenty to thirty percent over next door, which you would have had to pay a thousand maybe twelve hundred a foot uh, for this kind of space. Okay, there's another uh, article I did which you can look and these are all listings. It's called $27 million uh, listings. And here, I made a video. And also, there's all the links in the gallery. It, it took me forever. It took two days. I don't know if I can do this again. But I had to, like, chop every picture, uh, JPEG every picture, upload it, da, 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 But made it. And you can see pairs, 1080, 77 Avenue, 1048, 1 Bloor, 116. So there's a lot of listings in the million-dollar range. And if the listing still exists, because I just posted it yesterday, so most will exist still, 
um, this will pop up, okay? So you can go to Yorkville Luxury Real Estate, go to the Million Dollar Condo, watch the video, just click on anything you want to see. This just goes on forever and ever, but just to show you, here's a million dollar, this is a good deal, I think. Uh, that's, I believe that's a penthouse. Penthouse. Pretty sure that's the penthouse. 1010 square feet, so he's asking a thousand a foot. Okay, pretty nice. Now, I don't know if he's got the keys yet, but we can see the floor plan. It's a very tight floor plan, but this could be a very good investment unit because it's got three bedrooms and a large balcony. So you can put three people there, you know, each paying 1200 or 1300 or even 1500 You can't even get a bachelor for this, but you can live in a penthouse. So three young uh, professionals want to put, uh, say, 1500 a month. You're getting 4500 a month for this thing. Not bad, right? It's, it's totally possible. I don't know if this is from the unit or it's a render. It's hard to tell these days. Just not possible. But that's, that's what I'm talking about, okay? Like if someone prefers to rent, they can do it here. Okay? And, and it, it goes on and on and on. You can see and, and a million dollars is no longer that crazy. You can get some very, very nice listings and they can still work in terms of making money on rents or just living there and then banking on the appreciation, you know, paying the unit down and banking on appreciation. But the quality of product you, you get in some of these units is unbelievable. Okay, so this is a prime unit. Now it looks staged. Maybe someone lives there, I don't know. And it's got an outdoor pool. I mean, you know, if you're looking to buy one of these units, would you not get 5000 a month for this? I think you would, especially if your renter and i've had a bunch of these are one of the sports team you know they they go in the raptors they play baseball they skate a lot of them come from other provinces cities countries even the states obviously lots but europe maybe and the companies pay i've done deals with the blue jays where you know you get a letter from the blue jays and the guy signs for the blue jays and the actual uh person i asked him like what do you do is he's i run he's like, great <laughs> i have a no like i I, I don't know that game or the team very well, but he was one of the Blue Jay guys, and you know they they're paying four or five or six thousand dollars, no big deal. And if he's like a top guy, you know he'll pay ten or twenty thousand because you know they make millions a year, so they don't even care. They don't have to pay for it anyways. So there you go. So that's a very nice unit that you may want to do a long term, like six months or more, furnished rental at six thousand a month. And there are very, very few units that can deliver that kind of quality. That's why, in my opinion, that's a nice unit. Okay? So that's what I mean when the, 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 the rental market is changing. Toronto is becoming a megalopolis. Uh, the money is flowing here like crazy. So there's, there's more. There's a lot less at the bottom end, but there's a lot more at the top. And, you know, a million dollars used to be, like, unheard of, but now a million one, like here, not such a big deal anymore. Okay? And you can get very good rent for these things. All right. I'm going to uh, talk a few more things, and then uh, we're going to go look at that crazy uh, uh, fixer-upper that I have for you. Uh, one more thing. There are just a few buildings with outdoor pools existing in Toronto. Uh, even the summer is so short, especially this year. Uh, you know, Fashion House, Bo Thompson's, uh, this one, and a few others. And if you want, uh, you can go to uh, you can go to UrbanRealtyToronto.com. There's a search for pools, condos with pools. I already pre-programmed it. It goes Toronto condos with pool for sale. Then it's gonna open a search. This is a live link, scanning Toronto. Uh, so this is live, and if the pool comes up. And let's sort it by uh, latest listing. So what, what just came up? Let's see. And I can zoom in here. Re-render. Quite a few. So it's not going to say indoor pool, outdoor pool, rooftop pool. You know, it's just going to say pool. But if the system finds a pool, it'll show you. So it's a bachelor for 450 but the building has a pool. And to me, a building with a pool is very important. So once you have done this kind of work... Um, you will zoom in on those buildings you prefer, 
and then we'll basically run searches for these buildings particularly and when then those come we'll go check them right away because we'll have the first we'll know first and sometimes I know even before they come on the market which is even the nicest thing okay so that's what's happening here so you want to look at uh, Roehampton that's Young and Eglinton or anywhere you want to not uh, this is art shop okay uh, occupying Liberty Village it's all over the place I'm searching all of Toronto to find building with pools. Scaling, that's a much older building, by the way. Still there. One King. Casa. On and on and on and on. It's all over the it's all over the place. It's all over the map. Okay, but that condo with pools, uh, they have good value. Um, if you want to find assignments, hit the assignment link and it's gonna run a search for you. Live search. Every time you hit it, it runs a search. So if a listing, that's why I like to sort by recent. Because if a listing would just upload it, this is already sorted by um, recent, it'll just show you what's available. So this is, uh, I think this is the same unit we looked at earlier. And all these buildings here are tagged with assignment. So that's why you see some of them don't even have pictures. Lazy agents don't do pictures. Okay, don't list with lazy agents. Don't list with, oh, don't do that. Uh, it's important. The moment, uh, this just finished 875 Queen. So some people are trying to uh, uh, get rid of some units. It's a nice building, actually. Uh, west side, east side, on and on and on. It goes forever. So, if, But there's way more assignment. There's hundreds and hundreds of assignments. These are listed on MLS, or they're listed within our one of the systems that we pull information from. But there are more. There are way more, so I can tell you. Okay? All right, so I think this is it for that video. I want to go and show you that crazy... Um, listing that I found that is really cool um, visit my site there's a lot of great information here I'm, I'm actually sometimes I just go through my this is one of the top posts everyone will see like this expensive penthouses this is crazy stuff okay five million maybe four million six million six almost seven million almost seven so uh, you know, I post, I, uh, I don't pay anyone, I do these myself, if you find any mistakes or errors or typos, whatever, let me know, but these are real, I make them. Okay, yossikaplan.com, this is a really good site, here I posted uh, articles about investing and unique opportunities, uh, this one here, we'll talk about investing, it usually got a video in it, so I, I make the article and a video and I put them together because I think it's more, you can learn more and I run through things that you want to know about investing and that that's a good read it's not what's in the video it's it's more of like a, a summary another view of the same topic so to help you understand it from various perspectives you learn more that was the bloomberg that's the treb that it, these these are the stats the newsletter if you're not and here it gives you also listings and some cool stuff and it also show you the video Reina condos I made it yesterday we'll see what happens this one I think will just capture SEO like nobody's business so I'm kind of playing with that okay you ready so I got this thing for you here what is this mind okay so here we go so this is 23 McGill Street in Toronto 23 McGill, that's basically Young and Wellesley. So that's you really, really close to uh, Young and Bloor. And this house is maybe one of the last houses that has not been updated in many, many years. Maybe 40 or 50 years. This house is a wreck. This is a gut job. Look at this. What a mess. This is an old, old kitchen, maybe from the 80s. Uh, another flight of stairs probably this is very messy so my guess this place is a rooming house they're probably running this place as a rooming house by the week by the month by the night who knows um, and there's some people coming and crashing here I would come here and just take everything out rip the walls and redo it and if you're looking for renovations this is something that we're doing I've been doing renovations and proper house but for many many years even before you know my background is construction even before I was in real estate I already bought houses fixed them and sold them in Toronto full large houses 
Um, but my partners are excellent, excellent renovators, and we work together as a team. This looks like the basement. This place needs a lot of work, but it's a big space and an amazing location. Big space in amazing location right downtown. Okay, so 23 McGill. I'll post the link below. Rarely available, solid century townhome, deceivingly spacious. I wouldn't use that word. Soaring ceilings on uh, ground and second floor. Architectural details remain unspoiled. Nice. Uh, basement dug, da 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 da. Three rooms rented, share common area, the rooms locked, and no viewings. Please respect. Okay, so that's uh, asking 1.2 million, just under. Now, you have to do comparisons to know if, if you want to buy. What, what I would do is like, run some comparisons and go, okay, what's a house in the area sells for? How much would it cost me to renovate this thing? Now, let's just say it costs you 300000 okay? That's enough to like rip the house, redo the electric, all the plumbing, and put uh, a couple decent kitchens. Can do a lot with three hundred, and we can do the job. Um, so it brings it to one point five. One point five for for a house, a young bluer, at uh, if reported correctly, over twenty five hundred square feet. Not bad. <laughs> very very good. Let me show you the map. You're right by Ryerson, Church and Wellesley, McGill Street, Allen Gardens. There's the government of Ontario. Now you can turn this into a beautiful, from a roomy house, you can just push it up like I showed you with the million dollar condos and push it to a, mil, to a $2 million level but only invest 1.5 and then you, know, you do whatever you want. You can rent it, you can flip it, you can live in it but there's a lot of money, there's a lot of value, I should use the word value, to be extracted here. Okay, so... I don't know what the story behind here, and you can see architectural details, but not much. But to me, that is a prime, prime uh, target to check, to look into it, to look at the opportunity. We can definitely help you with the renovation. And just so you understand, uh, my team completed the renovation here. This is a general contractor that I hired, and we work together. And the job done was absolutely beautiful. Okay, so I'll just show you some of the capabilities here. This is a 40-year-old building. If you've seen, there's a before called a pre-listing video you can see, but it was like, it looked like 40 years old, and now it looks better than any other condo on the strip. Completely everything, like, just ripped everything out, literally ripped everything out and redid everything from floor to ceiling, kitchen, plumbing, um, licensed electrician, licensed plumber, all the trades are licensed we would never ever use. I would never use and never do you use someone who's not licensed. Okay, don't do it. It's, it, they cost a little more, but I know everything works and it works proper and it's safe. You know, this is going to be a place for a family. It's got to be safe. Uh, beautiful double sink, quartz countertops, gorgeous appliances, hardware, everything is perfect. This is the quality of work that I'm talking about. Imagine this quality of work at Young and Bloor, built in, built in California style closets. That's really nice. I mean, you just move in. You, there's nothing new to do. Everything was done for you. Everything was done. It, no details skipped here, 100%. Okay? So you go to a house like this, you know, most people see nothing. I see treasure. And then you make it like this, that's pretty good, okay? So that's my message for today, that's it.